What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we have a new bike unboxing. We're gonna build it and head out and test it. This is the Throne Serpent. This is a new Emoto, 72 volts, large battery, good top speed, and we're really excited to try it out. As you guys are watching this video, if you enjoy it and you realize I like Emoto videos, hit that subscribe button because we got some exciting stuff coming. Let's get this thing opened up and go ride it. What do we got? Oh, no way. That white looks so cool. Look okay, Throne really has some awesome colors for the Serpent. We're stoked to get white. We've never had a bright white frame on a bike because most of these bikes just come in black. So I think they have like red, green, gray. Do they have a blue? I don't know. We're gonna flash them up on screen because there is a lot of color options. Handlebar. This thing is very well packaged. That is a very nice seat. Let's get this battery out and get it charging. We got a keyhole right here. Turn it, pop it up, and the whole seat comes off. Here we go, we are already disconnected from shipping. So I think we got a little latch right here quick release that is super nice because it holds the battery in super snug obviously you, you can't remove it as quick as some other batteries but I would much rather have my battery secure and not rattling around All right, pop that up oh that's a nice snug fit okay 72 volt 40 amp hour we're gonna get her charging Before we jump into these specs, I need to remind everybody that we are giving away a brand new Tolari Sting MX-5. You guys need to check the link in the video description and head on over to tbelectricmoto.com, claim your free entries. We're super stoked to be able to offer this bike and you guys can win it. So go get your entries. Let's talk about some specs. So first off, this is the Throne Serpent. This is the super bright white color. And as you can see, it is super bright. It's literally glowing out here. And I think it's super fun to have different colors for a manufacturer to offer instead of just your basic black. Moving on to performance, we have a 72 volt 40 amp hour battery, which if you don't know battery sizes, that's comparable to an E-Ride Pro SS and a Tellaria Sting MX-5, they have the same size battery. Both those bikes get excellent range, so I suspect this one will too. If you guys wanna see a range test in the future, drop a comment on this video. So we are running 10 kilowatts of power. That's a lot. That's gonna power this bike up to 55 miles an hour top speed, which we will test later in the video with a GPS to verify. We have a super nice display here. It's got a lot of functionality built into both of these controls on the side. We literally have a kill switch, which is nice. We have headlights on, off, and brights. We have our mode button here. You've got eco, drive, and hyper. Just, I love the bikes that have three different driving modes. I think it really is nice for letting different people try and test your bike. You can go slow, you can go fast, depending on how comfortable you are. If you're new to the bike, you can start in eco and work your way up. We have these nice brakes. These are DOT 4.0 fluid. So dot four, those are gonna be more powerful and they feel it just riding it down the street to this location. They do feel really good in comparison to every other Emoto that we've tested. We've got 19 inch wheels front and back. We got 220 mil brake rotors, KKE front suspension. And what do we got in the rear here? Let's check it out. Looks like KKE in the rear. And I noticed that this spring is quite a bit beefier in size than a lot of the other Emotos. So we're excited to test this on an off-road situation later in this video. We're continuing on with some more unique features. We have these controls on the left side. If you hold this button and do your throttle, that's gonna be reverse. You've got your headlights that you can toggle and leave your brights on. Or if you're in this mode, you can hit this lever here and again, toggle your brights on and off. You have the opportunity to add blinkers to this switch right here and you've got your horn. <laughs> Then moving on to our seat, this is a super nice feature. As you can see, it's super long. You could easily fit two people on this. And it's nice because you can slide your weight back to the back for popping up that front end, which is super nice if you like to wheelie. If we move on to opening this up, you can pop your seat off, super easy. And you even have some storage right in here. I don't think it's big enough to fit the charger, but you could fit some tools, a snack, a drink, potentially. 
And then if we look at this battery system here, we have a really unique plug that actually pops up like this to be able to unplug your bike, which I think is nice. Like it's a nice beefy plug. It's not gonna ever come unplugged because it goes on and you latch it down. This is a built-in charge port that runs to the side of the bike. So you can charge your battery right here from the side, or if you remove your battery, you charge it from this port right here. You also notice there's this bar going across the top with a quick release latch that holds your battery in place and makes it so it does not rattle up and down. There's still a tiny bit of side to side play, but usually that is not as big of a deal when you're riding as the up and down bouncing of a battery that we've experienced in other Emotos. So with that, you can pop your seat back in, pop it down and you're good to go. I love that design. They also include a direct mount stem. What I am gonna knock them points for is I really wish they would have included a taller riser that you could add optionally if you're a taller person. I'm six foot three and I can already say like the bars are a little low. So I think in the future we might add a taller riser bar or a taller direct mount stem to this. Overall, we are very impressed with the fit and finish of this bike. It was very easy to assemble and really feels well put together. There's even this cool button right here that I didn't show earlier that turns on lights right here on the side. They quote the weight of the Serpent at 171 pounds, which I think is about right. However, I think they've done a really good job with the geometry to where the front end feels really light. I didn't know that the bike was that heavy. We just looked up the weight and in riding around for a few minutes, it did feel lighter than that. So that's a great point to the geometry of this bike. The time of filming this bike is $5,000. If you guys are interested in purchasing it, there will be a link down in the video description below. We don't have any rules or anything that we are supposed to say about this bike because it's a totally unbiased review and we're excited to test it and compare it to all the other bikes that we have tried. At $5,000, it is right in the neck of the woods of a bunch of other e-motos, the Talaria Sting, the E-Ride Pro SS, and several others. But I think this bike has comparable power, comparable performance, but also has a lot of cool, unique features. So I think this bike is gonna compare really well and we're excited to get more time on it later in this video. Guys, it is drag race time. I am on this throne serpent. Reed is on a stock E-Ride Pro SS 2.0. We both weigh the same. We're gonna do a first drag race and then we'll trade bikes. So it's fair. You ready? Okay. Three, two, one, go. Oh, we're neck and neck. Come on. Ah, come on. Oh, man, that was so close. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, we better switch riders, run it back. That was so close. That was so close. We're trade bikes, drag race number two. You ride Pro SS 2.0 right here. Look at that bright white, looks so good. Okay, you ready? Three, two, one, go. Oh, we're neck and neck again. Come on. Come on. Oh, he's pulling. Wow. All right, well, that's pretty much a tie right there. <laughs> All right, it's time for the top speed run. We got our GPS right here. We're gonna click start, and see how fast we can get. We just did that drag race, and I gotta say, after getting off the E-Ride Pro and back onto this, this is so smooth and quiet, but also just feels nice. Like, I don't know, it just feels good, man. Okay, here we go. All right, we got 54.7 miles an hour. Really not bad because they quote 55, so that is right on the money. For some reason, my display is in kilometers an hour. It was in miles an hour yesterday, so I don't know why it's in kilometers today. I'll have to figure that out. All right, guys, it is now time to take the Serpent on a real ride. We've got a full charge, 99% battery. We've got four miles on our odometer, and it had two when we got it. So we've only ridden just a little bit around the neighborhood, and let's go. So right off the bat, the handling feels awesome on the road. Like, it feels nimble and light, and like the geometry just makes you feel like you wanna just flick it around in the turns, which is kind of rare. I don't really get that feeling with a lot of the bikes that we test, especially not stock. Our goal today is to make it to the top of this mountain. Not right there, the very, very top. And we're gonna try to do it before the sun sets. 
It's epic sunset out over these lakes. And it goes down at 7.05 is sunset tonight. And right now, I think it's about 6.05. I just got on the single track, and already this bike feels really interesting in a good way. It, it is super nimble. Like, it almost like, uh, how do I explain it? It's kind of like shooting from the hip. Like, you feel like you can just lean your hips and lean into the turn in a different way than I've honestly felt. And it makes the bike feel light and agile and nimble. I feel like I can go slower and have more fun because I can just like lean. Like it just whips around these turns. And the bike is not on the lighter end of, you know, these types of E-motos. Like it's, it's on the heavier side for its size. But so far, I am super impressed. This bike is really fun. So far, so good. We're still going up. We started down there, so we made a lot of progress. But we got a lot further to go. We are at 82%, so our battery's doing good. And we're gonna keep going. So I've spent some time, quite a bit of time sitting down because that kind of is where this bike feels really fun and nimble uh, and playful in that kind of unique way that I was talking about. I did a little bit of time standing up too and I almost felt like the bike was like too twitchy and stuff. Well, I think the handlebars just really do need to be higher. They are pretty low, so I kind of feel like I'm like squatted over the bike, but also hanging on. The bike also sounds good. Sounds different than most of the other bikes and it just sounds and feels smooth. I think this would just be a really fun cruising bike on the road because it just sounds cool. I don't, I don't know how else to explain it, but here we go. Nice. Okay, the brakes. There's a good braking. Not bad. Look at these Utah colors. Oh, fall is like almost coming to an end. I might only get to ride these mountains and these trails for another week or two, and then we are going to have snow where I'm going. Okay, now standing up when it's a little bit pointed downhill is fun. Suspension's not bad. The back feels a little stiff, kind of like deflecting or bouncing me off of rocks instead of absorbing the hit. So I'm gonna pull over here in just a second and see if I can soften it. So the rear shock was almost all the way soft. I was able to soften it three clicks of preload. Pre it, it had 10 adjustments and I was seven towards soft. Okay, but it's not feeling bad. Like getting into these rock gardens, it's really not feeling bad. The fork is not my favorite. Um, these KKE forks are just not the highest end on the market. So far I am really liking the full length seat because you really can adjust your weight based on the type of riding you're doing. If you wanna pop the front wheel up more, you can just, you know, scoot a little further back and that really helps that. You can also lean forward, like if you're launching to do a drag race or something, the seat comes all the way to the front here. So you can literally like slide all the way up to get a good launch. So you guys will know if you watch our videos that we have some of the most upgraded E-Motos there are. We have a very modified Suron Ultra B, a Suron Light B that goes 96 miles an hour. We have several Talarias that are heavily modified. You know, more power, more sus bigger suspension, better suspension, better brakes, you name it. And yet, I am having an absolute blast riding this bike it just feels good and I don't know why but it just feels good and that you know what yes it doesn't really matter why it feels good but it does feel good a lot of stock bikes come out that I try and there's just like too many things missing on them they just at the base they're a good bike but either the battery's too small or they don't have enough power or they are too heavy or they don't feel nimble or they need this, this, and this to make it, for me, warrant and justify the price tag to buy it. But this bike, I'm just really not feeling that. I think that anyone could buy this and just have an absolute blast. Okay, we're going up a really tricky rocky climb that I actually don't make it up. Oh, ow. Oh. I got freaking impaled by that tree. But it's a good opportunity to turn around. Look at that. 
You guys may recognize from our other videos, this is what we call fern forest, way up the top of the mountains. All the ferns are brown now, we're into the grass, but it's October and everything's dying. We'll see some fresh ferns again next year. Okay, here's the top of the single track. Time for some dirt road ripping. Look at that view. Let's check what time it is. We have 6.35, oh wow, we're doing good. We got 30 minutes till the sun is gonna be gone. Okay, let's talk about this bike for just a second and then we're gonna send it up this dirt road. Okay, so now I have no idea why this bike feels so nimble and so playful and so light. When you ride it, it just feels totally different than any other e-moto I've ridden. And I don't know why. I like it. There's those side lights, like that. The front end just feels so light. The rear has lots of traction. I like the throttle feel. The brakes are good. You guys may recognize these are the same calipers that E-Ride Pro uses, but these are much larger DOT hoses and much larger reservoirs up here with a full banjo fitting here. That's a big difference and you can feel it. We are at 61%. We have done 6.1 miles and climbed almost 4,000 vertical feet in 42 minutes. Okay, I just put it in hyper mode. Let's see what that feels like. Oh, it's fast. Dang. I'll be honest, this bike is far exceeding my expectations. I was excited to review it, but I ride so many stock bikes and now I ride so many better upgraded bikes that have had five, six, seven, eight thousand dollars in upgrades. So obviously they're gonna feel amazing. So I don't know, sometimes I just am not as excited about new bikes coming out as I should be. And that was kind of the case with this one. It was like, okay, well, it's got, you know, similar power to other bikes and similar size battery and a lot of similarities. And sure, it has some cool, unique features. It has the side lights. It's got both of these, you know, full button setups where you can do a lot of cool things. I did not think this bike was going to be any game changing bike. And yet, I feel like it's a awesome riding experience and is different than any other bike on the market. It doesn't feel quite as fast as an E-Ride Pro on the top end. That bike feels a little faster. Tolari Sting MX-5 feels a little faster. And that all, you know, makes sense because of the power that this bike is rated to. Oh man, it just, oh, it just feels good though. Going along with what I've been saying, I wanna emphasize something. And that's that I have a hard time faking when I like something. And so we just don't do it on this channel. It just doesn't make sense. It's not what our channel is about. We never say a bike is good when it's not. Because it's just not fair to you viewers or anybody that's gonna go out and purchase a product that we review. And that's the same case with this. I am, I cannot hide like how much fun I'm having Here's the view. This is the very top of this mountain. Actually, that's the very top of this mountain. We're gonna go up there, let's do it. Holy cow, our dust got all the way up. Look at this. Wow. Well guys, thanks so much for watching. I think I'm running out of things to say about the Serpent. It has far exceeded my expectations and I'm super grateful that I've had the opportunity to test it and review it. Again, this review is totally unbiased. We have no rules or restrictions on what we have to say. If you guys are interested in this bike, just check the link in the video description. You can head on over to Throne's website, pick one up. $4,400 I think is an actual value for this bike. Yes, there are some other bikes that are a little bit more expensive that you can get a little bit more power out of, but I don't think it matters. I think this bike has enough power. It feels very in line with an E-Ride Pro SS and just slightly slower than a Tolari Sting MX-5. The build quality is nice. It's got all those added features. So if you guys are interested, check it out. Link in the video description. And I have to emphasize again, you guys got to enter to win the Talaria Sting MX-5 that is being given away. Check the link in the video description as well. Head on over and you guys can enter to win that. And with that, it's time for me to enjoy this sunset and then head on back down the mountain. We'll catch you guys next video. Thanks for watching. See ya.
All right, the video was supposed to be over, but I forgot a couple things that I want to add. So I'm back from the ride. The bike is all dusty. We ended up doing 26 miles and about 4,500 feet of climbing. So the battery did pretty dang good. We ended at 20% on the display. And what I did notice is the power did start to drop off around that point. It wasn't able to go anywhere near the 50 miles an hour that that it can when it's fully charged. So I'm kind of curious to see how that goes as we continue to use it and continue to drain it further than 20%. And then the headlight. I mentioned I was gonna figure out how good it was because I hadn't ever ridden this bike in the dark. And it's got a couple different modes. You can do daytime running on, and then you've got low beam and high beam. The one thing I don't like is that you can't use high beam and low beam at the same time because the low beam is super close to the bike, kind of a square. And then the high beam is super far away. And so it's, you'd never really get a good combination. You either can't see far enough or you can't see close to you. So with that being said, the bike actually really surprised me as you guys seen, and it's still a super fun bike after riding 26 miles. Thanks for watching, catch you next video.